Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with the today's practice questions, a quick gentle reminder. We have just one day to go for our target prelims 2023. This session will be conducted live on our YouTube channel from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. starting from tomorrow. There will be about 22 sessions and what we would cover is all the current affairs related topics that have been in use for the past 365 days. This is the schedule. First session will be about Indian economy, followed by Indian polity, environment and ecology, science and technology, international relations, government schemes, so on and so forth. So watch us live from tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Let's get started and look into the first practice question. With respect to Pradhana Mantri Bharatiya Janavshadi Pariyojana, which of the following statements is our correct? It was launched by the Department of Pharmaceuticals of the Ministry of Health. Under the scheme, dedicated outlets known as Janaushadi Kendras are open to provide generic medicines at affordable prices. A medicine is priced on the principle of maximum of 25% of the average price of the top three brands of the said medicine. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Pradhana Mantri Bharatiya Janaushadi Pariyojana, which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, it was launched by the Department of Pharmaceuticals. Yes, it is launched by the Department of Pharmaceuticals. But this is not under the Ministry of Health, but instead it is under the Ministry of Chemicals. So remember, the first statement is wrong primarily because the Department of Pharmaceuticals comes under the Ministry of Chemicals. Second statement reads, under the scheme, dedicated outlets known as Janaushadi Kendras are open to provide generic medicines at affordable prices. This statement is right. What is the intent of the scheme? The intent is to provide generic medicines at an affordable prices. What do we understand by this? We have the branded medicines. We also have the generic medicines. These branded medicines are the original medicines that have been produced by that manufacturing company. However, a generic medicine is one which is produced by a homegrown company and this will be equally efficient. It will also have the same quality. So a generic medicine will be far cheaper in comparison to a branded equivalent of that medicine. So under this particular scheme that is Pradhana Mantri Bharatiya Janaushadi Pariyojana, what we will have is the Janaushadi Kendras. These are like the medical shops where one would be able to go to this particular shop, buy the medicine which is far cheaper than the standard branded medicines. So second statement is right. When you look into the third statement, the third statement is wrong. That is because a medicine is priced on the principle of maximum of 50% of the average price. It is not 25%, it is 50% of the average price of the top three brands of the said medicine. Thus, all the prices in Janaushadi medicines are cheaper at least by 50% and in some cases, they are cheaper as much as 80 to 90% of the market price of the branded medicines. So the first and the third statement are wrong. The second statement is right. So the answer to this would be two only. Now let's look at important facts with respect to this scheme. Under the PM BJP, Pradhan Mantri Bharati Janodashri Kendras are set up across the country so as to reduce the out-of-pocket expenses for healthcare. Bureau of Pharma, PSUs of India, under the Department of Pharmaceuticals, is involved in coordinating, procuring, supplying and marketing generic medicines. And we also have one of the applications developed by the central government, which happens to be Janoshadi Sugam application. In order to help people locate the Janoshadi Kendras, this particular application can be made use of. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements is are correct? The Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program is an initiative that was launched after the Kargil War. Exo-atmospheric interception means the missile fired by an Indian testing agencies had destroyed the incoming enemy ballistic missile within the Earth's atmosphere. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the Hindu article. This article makes a reference to Indo-atmospheric interceptor missile. This basically means that the missile that is fired by the Indian testing agencies had destroyed the incoming enemy ballistic missile 
within the earth's atmosphere if it is within the earth's atmosphere it basically means endo atmospheric if it is exo atmospheric it means it is outside of the earth's atmosphere at a higher altitude so if it is endo atmosphere it is within the earth's atmosphere but if it is exo atmospheric interception it basically means that the incoming enemy ballistic missile is destroyed outside the earth's atmosphere at a higher altitude so the second statement is wrong because this statement is about endo atmospheric interception when you look into the first statement the indian ballistic missile defense program is an initiative that was launched after the kargil war yes this statement is right what exactly happened during the 1999 what we had was a kargil war you also have skirmishes with china every now and then as well what if they launch the ballistic missile in order to prevent these ballistic missile from being dropped on india in order to protect its people we came up with a program called as indian ballistic missile defense program in case ballistic missiles are launched by any of the countries it can be pakistan it can be china or any other country in that case we should be able to stop it that is what is called as indian ballistic missile defense program this was an initiative that was launched after the kargil war so basically india is the fifth nation in the world along with us russia israel and china that has the ballistic missile defense program introduced in the light of ballistic missile threat from pakistan it is also a double tiered system consisting of two interceptor missile so what is the purpose the purpose of this trial is basically to engage neutralize the hostile ballistic missile threat thereby elevating india into an elite club which includes united states of america it includes china it includes israel as well as russia now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statement Tamrilpta was a port city located on the coast of the Arabian Sea during the Gupta dynasty Tamrilpta was the main emporium serving as a point of departure for trade with Ceylon Java and China the Chinese pilgrim Faxian visited the city in the 5th century CE and Zhuang Zhong visited it in the 7th century which of the statements given above is are correct the answer to this is 2 and 3 only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to tamluk which basically is the ancient port town of tamripta so this tamripta happens to be one of the cities that is not along the arabian sea but along the coast of the bay of bengal so the first statement is wrong so tamluk which happens to be the ancient tamripta it lies just south of the river called as rupnarayan so it is just south of the river rupnarayan as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section where does this particular river rupnarayan rise which is the thermal power plant along this particular river this is what you have to put on the comment section what is tamripta stands for tamra basically means copper so this particular region in and around chota nagpur plateau was once a region which was producing a lot of copper since copper was produced in this particular region then there were also exports that were made from this particular port to couple of other countries which included sri lanka back then ceylon then it was transported to java that is indonesia and it was also exported to china as well so tamralipta basically means that this particular region in and around chota nagpur plateau was the region where a lot of copper was extracted and at the same time it was exported as well during the gupta dynasty tamralipta was the main emporium yes this happens to be the right statement and the third statement is also right the chinese pilgrim faxian visited the city in the 5th century and chuan zhang visited it in the 7th century both the statements are right and do note this was once again a port that had a very big role in spreading buddhism from india to southeast asia as well you also have people like sangamitra mahendra had visited on behalf of emperor ashoka to southeast asian countries by boarding a ship from this port and also carrying seedlings of the tree bodu brikya from this particular port now let's look into the next practice question 
What is anorexia nervosa? It is a complex chronic disease with abnormal or excessive fat accumulation. It involves getting up and walking around while in a state of sleep. It is an eating disorder that causes people to weigh less. It is a condition when the thyroid gland doesn't make enough thyroid hormones. What is anorexia nervosa? The answer to this is it is a eating disorder that causes people to weigh less. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to anorexia. Let us try and understand what is this disorder. This happens to be an eating disorder basically characterized by abnormally low body weight, intense fear of gaining weight and a distorted perception of weight. So what exactly happens? People believe that they eat far in excess, they would not look good, so they continue to eat less and as a result their body would not get equivalent amount of nutrition and ultimately they would weight less and this is an eating disorder creating what is called as anorexia. So a person with anorexia nervosa will often have an intense fear of weight gain. What are the symptoms of anorexia? Thin appearance, abnormal blood count, fatigue, insomnia, bluish discoloration of the fingers, softy downy hair covering the body, absence of menstruation in couple of cases, constipation and abdominal pain, intolerance of cold, low blood pressure, dehydration, swelling of arms or legs are some of the symptoms with respect to anorexia. What are the measures that can be taken to prevent it? Therapy includes counselling, nutritional advice and medical care and some people may also need treatment in the hospital as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which one of the following is called a stranger gas? Argon, neon, xenon, nitrous oxide. The answer to this is xenon. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2008. Now, as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, why is xenon called a stranger gas? Why is it called a stranger gas is what you have to put on the comment section. Now, let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is law and order. Let us try and understand what is the meaning of law and order? What is its difference between law and order and public order? When it comes to the criminal laws of the country, which are the major criminal laws that we have, we have the Indian Penal Code, which happens to be a substantive law. Then we also have procedural laws in the form of Evidence Act as well as the Code of the Criminal Procedure as well. So what we have is the Indian Penal Code, which is on the substantive side. And this law was created back in the year 1860. And after the independence as well, we have continued to use the same Indian Penal Code with large number of changes introduced into this particular act. Similarly, we also have the Evidence Act. We also have the Code of the Criminal Procedure, which clearly gives the procedural side of the criminal laws. When we speak about the criminal laws, we have the procedures that can be changed by the state government. Let's say, for example, we have the Indian Penal Code. If the state so desire, they can also bring changes as well. Why? Because it is in the concurrent list. So the criminal law and the criminal procedure is included in the concurrent list of the seven schedule so states would also be able to bring changes as per their regional scenario but when you look at law and order and when you look at public order it is in the state list it is not in the concurrent list so when it comes to the public order who can make the laws who can bring changes within it it is the state government so remember the subject of public order which includes law and order is allotted to the state legislature under list 2 which is state list when it comes to criminal law and criminal procedure it is in concurrent list but when it comes to law and order it is in the state list now the question is what is the difference between law and order and public order let me give you a simple example. Let's say for example, there are two drunkards. Two drunkards who have drunk, they are in a tipsy state, they have boost as well and they are not in senses. So what do they do? They create a lot of nuisance in the public. So when two individuals fight it out in public, what they are creating is a law and order, which means these two people are fighting amongst each other. Yes, two individuals are fighting, which means there is a law and order issue. But what is the difference between law and order and public order here? Let's say, for example, these two individuals are from two different communities. These two individuals are from two different religions. What if they throw their voices out and abuse each other on the basis of caste and religion in that particular case? If 
large number of people come and support them this can lead to public order issue so in law and order issue what would happen there will be only two issue there will be only two individuals who will fight it out there will be issue there will be violation of laws but if it is community at large if it involves large number of people if it creates riot like situation if it leads to a huge turmoil in the society that is what could lead to public order so in law and order yes it is a violation of law but it is between an individual and another individual but when it comes to the public order large number of people would be involved community at large will also be at stake as well this can create turmoil in the society that is the major difference between law and order and public order so this particular distinction between law and order and public order has been put out in Arun Ghosh was a state of West Bengal. So according to that decision, the distinction between the areas of law and order and public order is one of degree and extent of the reach of the act in question upon the society. So if it has a larger imprint, larger issues for the society, it is public order. But if it is for an individual and another individual, that is what is called as law and order. So what are the universal principles of law and order? Every person is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. No person shall be deprived of life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law. Criminal law is written law, includes law creating offenses and laws laying down procedure for registration, investigation, prosecution, trial of offenses and punishment. The accused must be tried in an open court of competent jurisdiction. The accused has right to defend himself and plead his case in person or through a pleader. The prosecutor is an officer of the court and must fairly discourse all material whether they are in favour of the investigating agency or in favour of the accused and ultimately the judge alone has the jurisdiction to determine whether the accused is guilty of an offence or not and if found guilty to impose a punishment. These are some of the universal principles of law and order. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.